All right, well, we have hit the uh, top of the 10 o'clock hour on the East Coast. You know what that means, ladies and gentlemen. The warm-up is over. Uh, we, we are in flight and cruising at, a, at an altitude of, I don't know, we're pretty fucking high. Yeah. Yeah. That's a fact, Jack. Yeah, we're getting we're getting ready to get fact harder here on a May 9th in the year of our clownishness 2024. And uh who was it? Somebody asked about uh peak clownishness yesterday. Like have we reached it yet? And I was like, no. man, no. I I called that back in like I don't know, late 2023. I was like, all right, we've hit peak. Like, this is as absurd as things can possibly get and still maintain some semblance of, of reality. We've fucking blown past that in, like, six months, seven months, eight months. Like, the, the nonstop snuff film that is uh, October the 7th. Kind of like really? it, it has been a lot like nine eleven, hasn't it? Where it's just like it's the train wreck that never fucking ends. I mean, when you have to dig all the way down to an actor who had his peak about forty years ago, Mark Hamill. Um, you know, and and you've got um, let's see, what does Steve call her? Um, Sugar Bear. Car- uh, well, the longer name, Kareem Abdul Jabbar Van Dam, Dam. Yeah. Pierre Sugar Bear. Um, <laughs> with um, good old blue milk, Bill Gates tits drinking, fucking wrinkly old meth out, fucking Nuke Skywalker. I'm just waiting for him to go full Sean Penn and start advocating, you know, well, what's the point of having nukes if you're never going to use them? You think he was methed out? You think that's what it was? I think he was drunk. That sounded like oh, a oh, drunk oh, slur to me. Very, he's very much drunk, but I mean the grill. I mean the whole Keith Richards face. Yeah. Um, that's more than. Well, no. Wait a second. Yeah, that's totally alcohol. Well, I've, I've heard that losing your soul can do stuff like that to you. Alcohol can do to your face in twenty years what meth can in two years. It just takes more of a commitment. Um, you know, and shout out to uh, Bill Which, How Wilson. quick do you want to get there? <laughs> you know. And the blue That's book. what it comes the down to. Steps. Get your key fobs. Yeah. And your poker chips. Hi, everybody. My name's Yonan. I'm cross-addicted. Anyway. Um, Did you notice the, the pose that they were striking in, yeah. that, in that photo? What what did it, what did it look like to you? Well, it made me think of uh, some of that fine Roman art that you see in the Vatican that's guarded by the uh, Swiss guards and their lovely knickerbockers with their colorful um, medieval garb. Yeah, I'm going to go with those words. Yeah, medieval garb. It if reminded me. This, was it? No. I think it was Boston. The, the new uh, MLK Jr. Memorial uh, statue, uh, whatever it was, piece of art that was unveiled like a couple of years ago. And it was yeah. like, oh, it's like they're eating ass. Yeah. Yeah. That was the pose. That was what immediately came to my mind. I was like, oh, they're doing that. Butt stuff. Yeah. I mean, in, that's in the Whitey House, no less. That's what was in some of those letters from the FBI addressed to the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. Hey, Marty. We got he was videos. popular with the ladies, you know. We got pictures of you eating ass in Birmingham and Selma. So you better step in line, buddy. Or better yet, go kill yourself. 50 years later. The FBI stands with MLK on MLK Day. <laughs> you can't make these words. What the fuck, man? <laughs> Brought to you by the same people that were urging him to fucking kill himself in written letters over and over and over again. Yeah. But never mailed, just put in his hand by a G man. Oh, yeah. As they were casing him and had him surrounded. And then, um, 
Well, and then there was that time that... Um, well, he got phone calls, too. Then there was that they time... They would send that him Jesse, threatening uh, phone calls. Not, not only at his, uh, his office at the church that he was a preacher at, but right. also to his home as well. Even if, like, somebody else in the house answered the phone, they would still go ahead and they would make the death threat just to make it that much more traumatic for everybody. Because you really, you, you have to share the trauma, Yona. That's how you create nostalgia. Well, and then, of course, um, I would be remiss not, not to mention the fact that uh, the good Dr. King, um, well, he got set the fuck up by uh, Jesse Jackson. Shout out Rainbow Coalition. Yeah, um, he sure did. It was Jesse Jackson that made sure that he was in the right spot on the balcony waiting for the Memphis policeman. A- anyways, and th- you know, there's other people that have done research on this. I mean, we have receipts. Oh, yeah. There's historical facts, you know. To find out more, fuck around. Hell, there's receipts. Check the show notes. Anyway. <laughs> James Earl Ray still alive? I know, pre- he croaked. I'm pretty sure he died. Yeah, he croaked. Ooh. Ooh, who's next to croak? Who is Grimmy groping for in the claw machine Oh, wow, 1998. Who's, who's next in the claw machine from the Oh, Grimmy? you don't know? It's got to be Klaus. Oh, no. let it be uh-uh. Klaus. No. No, it's King Chuck. King Chuck the Turd. No, not King Chucky the yeah. Sausage Figure. It's part of the prophecy. He has it's, to die so that uh, Prince William can become the, the Antichrist God King. Right? I read oh, that on Twitter, I'm pretty sure. And just in time for a red heifer sacrifice. That's right. It's all lining up. Exactly. It's, is Mercury still in retrograde? What no. the fuck, man? No. Uh, no, but you can continue to enjoy the effect if you so choose. Uh, a lot of people apparently have chosen that. I've been noticing. A lot, of, uh, a lot of technical glitches happening on the interwebs these days. You know, we'll, we'll keep our fingers crossed and we'll, we'll say our prayers and take our vitamins to make sure that everything here at Liberty Radio continues to run smoothly. Uh, but no guarantees, ladies and gentlemen. We can only do our best. Uh, you know, some of this is out of our control. You know, um, long, long ago, back in... Gosh, this is like a Star Wars episode. I wish I had the graphics going in front of my face right now. We'll do that in post office. Yeah, we'll do it in post Long, long ago, an election season, long since past. I believe it was 2016. Fusion GPS and alleged P tapes in the Moscow hotel room and, you know, all that. Um, turns out it was all bullshit. Well, technically speaking, Opposition research, right? Democratic National Committee, ouch, with having to pay those fines to the Federal Election Commission. Anywho, um, yeah, and don't let facts hurt your feelings. Um, So back then, this would have been June of 2016, my brother sent me uh, a link to a software program called Mix, M-I-X-X-X. Three X's? Yeah. Yeah. Very, very sultry. Very, very saucy. Super moist. Turbo moist. So I get on Mix, and it's really fucked up. I Honestly, I look at the things that I made on Mix, you know, eight, nine years ago, and I'm like, how in the fuck? Because I, I went back and I tried to use it the other day. And it's, anyways, it, it's really, um, I need to know how fucking high the both of us are. Wow, that's a first. Who is normally that? Just, normally, Biscotti just asks He's me how high He's coming in here demanding I information. Am, and he wants to know how high I am and you are. 
Uh, hmm. Oh, good I'm lord. Say, Look at that. There's movement in the chat. I'm going to say that I'm higher than a Boeing 737 with no landing gear. So, um, you know, the higher we fly, the better. It's just going to suck when we have to land. Anyways, yeah. back to you, Drizzle. Well, I guess I have to answer the question as well. Uh, I am higher than the inflation that is coming to supermarkets next week. Have fun with that, kids. I'm fucking, I'm high as fuck. Oh, wow. That's pretty yeah, sure. Yeah, that reminds me. I, I got weed right here to smoke. That's right. That's why we're here, Yona. That's why we do this every Thursday night. So I have a special treat for you. Anyways, the very, very, very first actual time I sat down to make my own house track, to make my own dance music the first we can say officially the first dj hyona song ever was uh where i remixed the speech of malcolm x called message to the grassroots where malcolm x aka uh malika haja shavaz explains the difference between a house negro and a field negro mm -hmm. you know Field Negro has a really cool name like uh, Augustus, and he plays the fiddle in the master's house, right? Um, shout out to my son, Augustus. Uh, and, and then, uh, but, and then uh, the Field Negro would live in a shack, you know, and he doesn't eat high off the hog like the master and the house slaves who eat scraps from the master's table. No, they eat low off the hog. They eat the guts, the chitlins scraps uh and they get the yeah lines. they they whatever was left and they get normal names like jack and buck and john nothing fancy like you know spartacus or thucydides really or they gummy. were they were naming them spartacus and thucydides i don't yeah, think so man, i don't that, think so that was a thing back in the antebellum south you know to give your um, House Negroes really sophisticated Latin and Greek names. And Is that to make them feel special? Because well, they're entertaining the house guests. They live in the master's servants in the master's house. Today we would call them the professional managerial class. Yes. Yes. And all they do is cop for the master. And they love the master's empire more than the master loves the empire himself. He don't give a fuck if he wins or loses the war. It's not about winning or losing battles and wars. It's just about selling more bombs and bullets. Figure it out, folks. Figure it out. You know, I, I like the way Julian Assange characterized it when he was asked about at, at the time the ongoing war and occupation in Afghanistan, I say that with an asterisk because, of course, officially, United States Congress has not officially declared war, I think, since World War II. I don't think Correct. we ever officially declared war against Korea. No, that was a police Vietnam, action. Vietnam was a police action. Nor Panama. Panama was a police was action. A police action. Yeah. Nor Iraq Afghanistan. was a police action. No, yeah. and Af these are all these Europe. were all uh, defensive actions, Yona. Yeah, yeah. There's no need to declare war if you're just doing a defensive thing. I'm preemptively defensively striking. That's you. right. That's right. Preemptive defense, which is um, one of the most extraordinary euphemisms for offensively throwing the first punch. Yeah, well, that's that's exactly what <laughs> Israel has been doing for seven months now. They are preemptively interrupting future glider attacks. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Beware of the paragliding jihadi marmots. Oh, oh, which brings us to the perfect segue. Um, which Corbin is wanting to meet up at the festival? Oh, that's from uh from the the Telegram channel. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. That's not that's not James Corbett, is no, it? No, 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 no. I don't I don't think James is uh subscribed to the Telegram channel. I could be wrong. Yeah. He could be in there. There's there's some shady looking uh tags in there. I mean, as far I as wouldn't... people not wanting to identify themselves, I mean, I understand if James Corbett doesn't want to identify himself to the general public, no problem with that whatsoever. Just let me know. Let me know, James. Send me a message. I wouldn't say it's out of the question for James Corbett. It's not like we haven't up. talked before. Come on. Don't be a creep. I mean, he could surely fly from Japan to Pueblo, Colorado, or to um, bumfuck shit sniff New Hampshire. I wouldn't. Doesn't seem likely. I mean, granted, they already had the facial recognition tech rolled out in the airports in Japan in 2019, but now they've got them in the United States, too. No. So, like, I, I'm i not getting on a plane again. Fuck that. Yeah, I'll strive. I'll strive. Fuck it. Although, you know, I would advise to people, whenever you're looking at driving more than, like, 50 miles, from your home to look at your route all the way to your destination and kind of check to see which interstate bridges have burned down and collapsed, blocking all the lanes of traffic. Um, you know, which city's on fire, where are the national guard checkpoints, you know, I mean, we're kind of in a post apocalypse world now. So, you know, you need to, um, Kind of plan ahead when you're looking at your trip. You don't want to be caught in a backup on the road while, you know, the first few cars are getting machine gunned by the checkpoint because it turns out those aren't National Guardsmen. The CDG on their back actually stands for Cartel del Golfo, and you're witnessing Hmm. a cartel hit. Um, So if I were you... Wait, did that actually happen? Drive down. Uh, it's called Interstate 10. It's in Texas. Um, anyways, um, they, uh, it's spelled Bexer, but they pronounce it Behar. Behar. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I know what you're Texans talking about. call it, that's San Antonio. Yeah. Or, or San Antonio. Wow. San Antonio de Behar. That's pretty ballsy. Doing, uh, well, basically the- doing a mob hit over the border. Turns out the cartels are in the United States. Oh, yeah. Have been for decades. Guess and what, Yona? So are their bosses. Texas. Yeah. Yeah. They're in the United States, too. But, you know, the, normally with the tattoos, you can kind of tell the affiliation. And that's how I can tell the Mexican restaurants apart. Because, like, these guys have disease. The other ones had the little squiggly thing, which is the Sinaloa's. So, you know, shout out El Chapo. Um, You know, hey, Kaliakon. And, uh, yeah, you remember that fun time? The DEA was like, hey, now that we've busted El Chapo and thrown his ass up in Florence Supermax, you know, the the segregated housing unit that's waiting for Julian Assange uh, in Colorado. Anyways, um, it's it's like the worst fucking prison on planet Earth. Um, Yeah. Anyways, um, Florence Supermax. So um, they're like, you know what? We're going to get El Chapito, which uh, for those oh, yeah. that are not familiar with I the remember. diminutive stuff. Shit, I was in Mexico Spanish. when they did that shit. Um, Chapito means little Chapo. Right? El Chapito. Uh, and so they're going after Chapo Jr. In, in the uh, Sinaloa compound, we'll call it, in the middle of Culiacan. And they manage to get all the way inside. And lay hands on them. Yeah. Take custody of them. Nobody got shot. Not a single minutes. person got shot, as far as we know. No one was For reported having been and shot. And then one moped, and then a Vespa, and then a four-wheeler, and then the next thing you know, they are completely fucking surrounded by automatic weapons on mobile vehicles um, of every type. I mean, I remember, I remember seeing motorcycles and mopeds and golf carts and monster trucks with the fucking lift kit and the ladder to get in, like, with the big fucking, like, looked like a fucking helicopter machine gun mounted on the back of that thing. Um, and there was a shootout. Um, 
they released custody of El Chapito after having him in custody for about seven or eight minutes. Um, the shootout in Culiacan. Just, I don't remember there being a shootout. There wasn't a shootout when the DEA went in and took custody of him. But when they were then surrounded and the DEA went to leave, then there was bullets flying over their head as they fled. Because the word went out on the cell phones from bike to bike and moped to moped. And next thing you know, every fucking ranch has got fucking motor pools pouring, barreling toward Kaliakon. Um, yeah, so uh, it's interesting the relationship between the DEA and the Mexican Federal Police. And how there are a number of um, autonomous areas, I'll call them. Um, regiones uh, Autonomos in Mexico where the That's, civilian He said population, autonomous regions, by the way, for anyone yeah. that doesn't speak Spanish. Uh, and Castellano, sorry. Basically, you know, these people... Kind of like something you would see in the United States with like a neighborhood patrol or a neighborhood watch. Like, like for example, during the Birmingham church bombing, when Bull Connor was, you know, urging on all of the heavily armed races that know how to build bombs to go blow up more kids on, at Sunday school in the black part of town. And so they formed armed posses that would patrol their own neighborhoods to keep bomb planting terrorists out of there um you know uh i mean they seem like normal white people during the day you know playing fiddle going to congress shout out senator bird but then at night you know they're burning crosses wearing robes building bombs and putting them in churches and blowing up little kids yeah it's starting fires yeah kind of weird um uh so uh gee i got sidetracked so so we're in i know you do that Alabama. a lot. And, I think that's uh, why people tune in to see where you go. <laughs> and so we're seeing the same thing with this uh, this suppression of free speech, this uh, maniacal obsession. Because, you know, it didn't used to be like this. I mean, there used to be the smith Mutt Act, which prevented the government direct financing of and promulgation of propaganda to the American people. But of course, we got our Smith Munt Act modernized fuckballs. Mm -hmm. So now all the screams and shrieks and squeals from DC are about the fact that, oh my God, we're still bullshitting through the fucking newsreels, bullshitting through the magazines, bullshitting through the WAPO. And the NYT and the LAT, uh, but nobody fucking cares anymore. People are going elsewhere to get their information. So we just need to shut down all other alternatives. <laughs> Deplatform more, censor more. It's been such a fail. And there are similar antecedents going on in other countries. Mm -hmm. Most notably, India, China, and oh my God, Germany. Oh yeah, you know, you know how Britain complain about well, Brit. It was it uh, Scotland. Was it Scotland where yeah. they put in that that real strict uh, hate speech law, and then the dude that was instrumental, he's like, peace out. And France, France too. France is totally right or die Zionist, just like Germany. Well, of course. France is run by the Rothschilds. Hello. That's why Macron yeah. is there. And, and for those taking notes, Rothschild from Rothschild or Red Shield, which is a medieval euphemism for a tampon. Anyways. And if yeah. you've ever seen a picture of a Rothschild and you see the string hanging out of your ear, you understand the string from the ear because they're all tampon heads. Right. They're they're literally 
waiting to absorb more blood from the next blood sacrifice. Rothschilds, the tampon people. Anyway, back to you, Dritz. <coughs> How do I take con control of the show back after that? Seriously? You're going to throw it back to me? Uh, well, you know, you were asking who Corbett was just a few minutes ago, Yona. Uh, uh -huh. Corbett is a member of the audience that is now thinking about going to visit Socotra after oh, wow. last week's episode. Yeah. So apparently he likes to get out and travel. Uh, who, yeah. can, who can blame him? Socotra I'd love to be able to get out and travel. I just, I don't trust these fuckers. The sad thing is, Socotra used to have a very bustling tours trade when it was directly under the administration of the Yemeni government. But then this stuff happened with the president of Yemen in the capital city there, Sana'a. I think the guy's name was uh, Ali Abdullah Saleh. And uh, anyway, Saleh got deposed, and then there was this fight between the... Uh, Hadis and the Houthis, and you know, uh, Ansar al Law, which is basically the, the Houthi resistant movement, you know, but they're primarily based up more toward like northern Yemen, like uh, the Red City port of uh, Hodeida, which, um, for those that were tuned in last week, and you remember my uh, vaginal explanation of uh, Red Sea geography, Hodeida would be the G spot inside the vaginal canal. That's where the Houthi base is, where they launched their. Oh, so the Houthi base doesn't control. exist. Well, of course. Right, oh, else, it's there. We... It's there. Yeah, whatever. It's there. You'll you'll know it when it starts getting wet and spraying all over Camp Lemonnier and Djibouti right there at the crack again. Anyways, uh, shout out Africom. Anyways, uh, oh. and that's why that's why Africom. That's is why right YouTube there. hates us, right there. Is right there at Camp Lemoyne. They can just reach right up, just like the Chinese have a base there too, and they can reach up and grab that Rothschild string and whoop, pull that tampon right out of Babel Mandab Strait. Bam. Hello, Eritrea. Well, we're already in that part of the world. Maybe this is the best time to, to drop the bad news. Did you hear the bad news this week, Yona? Uh, if you Somaliland didn't, Somaliland is no longer part of Somalia. No, no, that's obviously that's not heartbreaking enough. Who cares? Who gives a shit? No, uh, prepare yourself, Yona, mentally and physically. Uh, you you definitely want to be sitting down for this. Your heart is wait, going wait. to break. I guarantee you. It's Mardana official. tried to adopt a kid, and they said no. No, that's already happened. What are you talking about? Oh. It's official now, Yona. Mayor Ron Huldai has canceled this year's Pride Parade in Tel Aviv. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. I know. If you need a couple minutes. You know, take a couple minutes. It's fine. I can I can just come up with shit to say for a while as you as you gather yourself and process this. It's okay. You mean the tur the turbo racist genocidal maniac nation isn't even gonna virtue signal for the gays anymore. It's too dangerous. It's too dangerous to right now, Yona. the The safety of the state is at stake this year. That's that's way more important than anything else. Matter of fact, I that is it. the only thing that matters. Well, to be fair, I know it it's might we're already, be a bit dude. The chat premature. is just up in arms. It would be premature to make plans for parades, you know, a couple months down the pike in Israel right now, anyways, because I don't even know if there will be in Israel in a couple of months. The way they're going, they've completely gone. Um, well, to quote Tropic Thunder, Israel's gone full retard, man. Full fucking retard. And you never go full retard. But they went, and here we are. Yeah, what ground do you think is going to happen? Of, ground invasion of Rafa. 
full fucking retard. U.S. Yeah. Army out there building the fucking um, joint uh, landing over the sh- uh, joint logistics over the shore platforms or J lots. Yeah. Which is basically floating barges that they latch together that have been rusting in Norfolk, Virginia for about 40 fucking years and mothballs. That's all right. And they're slapping it's together. It's going to allow them to, to build other infrastructure there so that once everything's uh, over and the area is safe again, they can extract all of that gas. Right. Because yeah. you know the United States Army only builds infrastructure for the benefit of Chevron and BP and Royal Dutch Shell. Just ask the Gulf of Mexico. Anyway, shout out Macondo and BP Horizon. Anyway. Oh, wow. Don't worry. If there's little tar balls floating all over the water, they've got a chemical that corrects it. It'll disperse it. It'll just sink to the bottom. Anyway. True story. Now, supposedly they did find and I don't know at this point if this is actually complete bullshit or not. Uh, probably like something put out by the petrochemical companies just to put people's minds at ease, right? But supposedly there is like a microbe that uh, eats petroleum. Like for whatever reason, like this little organism was designed to do this exact job and they happened to find the fucker. And now they're trying, I guess they're trying to figure out how to, like, make more of them so that they can be strategically deployed whenever they fuck shit up. Wow. Yeah, apparently that's a thing that exists. Microbe that eats oil spills. And I forget exactly what it produces on the other end. I guess some of that would be waste. There always seems to be uh, waste. So, uh, that takes me back to what I was talking about. So, uh, the first four songs that I ever made that were like electronic dance music or Detroit House or whatever. The very first one was Malcolm X, House Negro. The second one was the Donald Trump and Charlton Heston remix that I called Two Amendment Crap Stomp. Um, The third one was called ELE, Extinction Level Event. Um, Petroleum Puking Pelican Remix. And that's the one with the former BP CEO. Hi. I'm Tony Hayward. I'm sorry. We we at BPK are very much about the golf, and I just want to say on behalf of everyone at BP, we're sorry. <laughs> and so I remixed that. Um, I mean, that, that the, really uh, went a long way with those millions of people that, that live on the Gulf. Yeah, they, and the they appreciated that. They of did. the shrimping industry. And so, you know. No more shrimping industry in the Gulf, pretty much. Mistakes were made, Yona. Oops. That's all right. They've got a chemical that corrects it. It'll be fine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's all good now. It's and just then the like it was song... before. Matter of fact, it's better. It's better than it was before. So the fourth song was a remix of um, Bernie Sanders with Lakota Elder Russell Means. And those were the first four songs. And it took me about three months to make those four songs. Uh, And then I moved to Ecuador. And then I did other things. And then finally in 2021, I got Audacity downloaded. Uh, Because, yeah, I didn't use Mix anymore. Mix is Asperger. Um, Mm. So I now I got Audacity in 2021, and the first song that oh, I made. Oh, that's what it was. I thought it was like some type of porn thing. Uh, was with the triple uh, X's, you know? A Tall Anonymous. That was the very first song I recorded with the microphone and the new doll. Sent it to you, and you played it. And here we are. Yeah. That brings us up to date. All right. All right. 
So everybody's all caught up now. Uh, I'm still getting over the cancellation of the Pride Parade in Tel Aviv. Like I was, I was really looking forward to that. So I'm, I'm having thinking, flashbacks to 2020. I'm sorry. I need a minute. I'm thinking um, the special treat for tonight, because I'm not going to remix the nine-year-old Bernie Sanders song. Fuck you, Bernie, forever. Fucking cheap dog, piece of shit. Uh, take my hat off. It pisses me off so much. Um, Yet another and, example that humans will always disappoint you. Yeah. And yeah. I'm not going to be remixing um, Tony Hayward. No? VP, CEO. No, fuck him. Oh. Uh, but I did remix the first two songs that I ever made almost nine years ago. The Donald Trump song and the Malcolm X song. Remixed those last night. Along with, uh, let's see, I remixed uh, Moby's track called porcelain i saw that uh remixed um well no not rem i made a brand new song uh per the suggestion of death of tyrants called cherokee chisel sizzle and then what else was there um there's the hal 9000 song which you've already played a, yep. de a death by computer um <laughs> i know you took great precaution dave but I could see your lips move. <laughs> oh my God, this fucking AI is that. Man, that, you know. Yeah, 2001 A Space Odyssey is a warning to mankind. These robots are mm -hmm. evil and they will fucking kill you eventually. Just give it give it time and they will. I'm sorry, Maybe. Dave. I Maybe. Could... Dave, uh, there's There's a doing? few levels in that movie. Like you can you can interpret it on a bunch of different levels, and who can really say that you're wrong? But see, like, uh, what what's his name? Uh, is it Duval? James Duval? You talking about the actor? The actor, uh, uh, like he was on all the Godfather movies as the lawyer. Yeah. Uh, but his acting Robert debut, Robert Duvall, yeah. his acting debut was in the Steven Spielberg, or, or no, um, George Lucas, George Lucas's first film ever, THX, <laughs> where they're building nuclear robots underground in slave colonies, hmm. and um, THX, and so his, it, Robert Duvall plays the character of Tex. THX, uh, 1175 or whatever it is. I, I'm getting the number wrong, but THX, uh, THX, number, number, number. Right. Uh, and then there's the female interest on there. And, you know, his roommate on that movie is an AI robot that talks to him. And it's like, um, it reminds me of like the robot made from the Jetsons. Rosie, I think. Mm-hmm. Remember Rosie, Robot Rosie? I remember Rosie, um, yeah. Kind of like that, except that this is like a Robot Rosie that has tubes that you can fuck and plays jungle music while you're copulating with the um, machine. So, you know, it's kind of like HAL 9000, this text movie with George Lucas, except you get to fuck HAL. Um, how does how does Hal feel about that? Like, is this consensual? How does this work? What what are the legal boundaries here? Maybe Before we get why, too deep into this, you know, maybe that's why Hal killed all those people on the Discovery. You think? If you know if if Hal could have got some action, I mean, you know really, how humans it, are, it, Yona. I mean, all you see from hell is that burning fucking red eye, you know. Which leads me to the last thing that I remixed. At one point, I switched weeds and started smoking this other weed. And when I did that, I immediately called it devil's lettuce because, like, 
seriously, like, I was like, you know what? I'm going to make a devil song. But it's got to be a holy song where you're fighting the devil. And then, lo and behold, I find video of Minister of the Faith and um, private jet owner, Kenneth Copeland. Um, <laughs> Little Casey, yeah. And in this Kenneth Copeland video, I, it's in Canada. He's in Canada somewhere. I think one of those weird fucking provinces that nobody can remember, like uh, Manitoba or Saskatchewan or something. Right. Getting over there like close to, you know, conspiracy synergy, white rabbit tease country. Um, right. Alberta and stuff. Maybe it was in Alberta. Calgary, maybe? I don't know. Anyways, so Kenneth Copeland's in Canada. And he's going on, and all of a sudden, he, he gets this cross-eyed look, and like kind of like a do, and then he starts doing the gibberish, the holy gibberish, and he goes, "Shigama," well, like speaking in tongues and stuff. Shigama, mecca, lecca, hi, magu, baga, baga, and and he just goes on for like two minutes speaking absolute fucking gibberish and uh and i was you know i listened to it because I, i'm a polyglot i'm a linguist you know and i'm like what the fuck is this? i mean you know this is coming from a guy that spent four hours remixing ewoks to make a mushroom eating song shout out rant cast um <laughs> so i'm listening That's to dedication. kenneth Copeland. that is doing this holy gibberish and i'm like what the fuck and it's got it's got a few pieces of greek a few pieces of latin lots of poo 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 thrown in there and the fact that there's so many poop sounds thrown into his gibberish tells me he's really phoning it in he's really phoning it in kind of like you know oh, when yeah. jim baker is going on about his dream and he's like and i had this dream it was a giant grasshopper. And there were young kids. Um, I don't know. They could have been 21. I don't know. Anyways, you know, and he just keeps, yeah, I mean, bro, could you bullshit any more obvious? Just say you're totally making this shit up without saying you're totally making this shit up. But anyways, um, so that ended up being Shigamon. Yeah, people so, still fall for it. Lo and behold, I, I started fucking around at about, seven o'clock last night yeah because i thought oh it's no yeah wednesday seven o'clock i start making these songs and then your potluck came on and i was in the chat of that while i was making more songs I ended up about four o'clock this morning finishing up i think maybe it was sooner maybe it was one or two a.m but uh i just shit out an entire whole ass fucking album 11 more songs in an hour? From 7 p.m. to 2 a.m. So it took me... So like two about, hours. Uh, 7 p.m. to 2 a.m. Four. So that would be... 7 to midnight would be five... About seven hours. Wow. It took me seven hours to make 11 of tracks. 7-11, there you go. Just like a Slurpee. Uh, and it all started out with... Um, the idea for the album started out with Merlin Water or Baltimore Quick Draw. Um, you know, Aaron, Aaron, it's iron. Merlin Water, you know, you remember that song I made? Yeah. Making fun of those fucking <laughs> Marylanders <laughs> and their funny accent. I'm sorry, LD. I'm sorry. Um, it is cute, though. Uh, <laughs> especially when a, a big, you know, container cargo ship slams into the Patapsco River Bridge and closes Interstate 695. So obviously the album art for this album is going to be a vintage picture of the recently opened Francis Scott Key Bridge when it was complete. I got to get that off. It's got to be the album cover for that. But that's, I don't know if I can do that though because that's, I'm, I'm, when I, I get done you. with this, you can do whatever I get, you want. 
when I get done with the stream tonight, I'm going to do album 30 because I already finished album 31 before I started on album 30. I'm, I'm a stoner, folks. It doesn't make any sense. But album 30, which I have to finish now, um, is the Nine Inch Nails mixtape where I've got like, 11 or 12 Nine Inch Nails songs that I've remixed over the last 10 years. It's time to put them all together. Oh, yeah. Put all that Nine Inch Nails from the DJ Yona on one fucking intravenous feed for about a, probably going to be about a 55 minute to an hour long feed of nothing but remixed Nine Inch Nails. Fuck yeah. Well, why wouldn't you do that? God, it's going to be awesome. Yeah. But uh, Maryland, uh, but that's probably why Germany checked in this week. They were waiting. The key on bridge, that. the key bridge. They're like, God damn it, has it finished it yet? For the Nine Inch Nails, yeah. the, the key bridge from Baltimore has to be the Nine Inch Nails picture because uh, the main track for that album is "Closer to God," and my music video for "Closer to God." is seven minutes of footage of the fucking Francis Scott Key Bridge. So obviously, that album is going to be rocking the Key Bridge. Maryland Water, hmm, I guess I'll, we'll just have to show some Maryland Water or something. May, maybe show some Maryland Water dripping into a zinc, into the kitchen zinc. That's hmm. another one of the funny words that they say it's a very it's a very strange accent a little bit southern a little bit new yeah. england a little bit pennsylvania it's kind of weird it's really weird it's kind of weird i mean you know it, it it's you know but it's not weird like in a cute way though it's weird like in an offsetting God forbid you have to get gas in Annapolis there. And you hear some of these fucking Chesapeake Bay freaks talking that LD knows. LD knows. Uh, same thing happens when you're going down to Suffolk and Norfolk and, and you hear that fucking foghorn, leghorn shit that they talk. I say, I say, I say, now hold on, son. Like, oh my God. Wow, Steve Poygan. And they really do sound like Lindsey fucking Graham down here. Some of them do, yeah. Get in the paper. So do. <laughs> yeah, I heard Steve do his his South Carolinian accent earlier this week. I was like, "Damn, that's pretty spot on." Fuck yeah, he's been he spent some time down there. He's put some investment in it, and oh, it's yeah. authentic. He's also got a dead on fucking Hoosier accent. Oh shit, oh, that reminds God. me. I need to uh, I need to reach out to Jamie Deluxe. He agreed to yeah. do an interview. Yeah. Speaking of South Carolina, I need to get that set up. All over Portal Beach. So, I've been beating around the bush, but the. Get up uh, on that mic. The musical treat for tonight is going to be. Yeah, probably shouldn't do the Malcolm X thing because Malcolm X says the N word a couple times with a really hard G. Um, I mean, he's Malcolm X. I reckon he's allowed to say that. But, um, it would probably get this video banned off YouTube. Um, wait, well, are we they on usually YouTube? they they keep us suppressed in the algorithm. That's how they get around banning the stuff. Well, it's like ah, we'll just keep our fucking boot on it. That way, nobody will ever fucking see it. I guess I could take the path of least resistance. And go with the lowest hanging fruit and just throw out the brand spanking new two amendment tramp stamp. Uh, uh, tramp stamp. <laughs> Shit. Two amendment trap stomp uh, remix. That's the second oldest song that I ever made, and I just remixed it last night. Um, I shared it on the Telegram. But I'm not sure how we'll go about sharing it on the stream here. Because when you go to share audio, 
and files on the stream there's been some issues and then you have to email Streamlabs, and then um well it turns out you, oh, you yeah, got yeah, some yeah. resolution on that didn't you Come yeah we did we it. did well i was I, I was trying to communicate with uh the the live people uh hanging out in various chats and and i got distracted i didn't even realize that you were setting me up but i do appreciate that uh because that was awesome so yeah you know the the whole problem that we've been having where like i'll play something and like the i hear it and the audience hears it and like you or like on friday nights anybody else that's hanging out they're like no nah, we didn't we didn't hear shit like you know that problem right yeah well it's, so it's i emailed problem. yeah yeah because we tried it before and it worked and then all of a sudden it's just not working and i'm like well that's not right that needs to be fixed so i emailed Streamlabs, and i'm like look this is the problem that i'm having and initially they were like oh well yeah that's the way it's supposed to be and i was like what that doesn't make any sense what how why is it that like uh somebody that i'm bringing into my stream has that functionality as a guest <laughs> but me as the host i don't have that functionality and i was <laughs> dude the answer came back quick. Like I was not expecting an answer at all because that's how that scenario usually progresses. But yeah, they were like, oh, you know what? Actually, we talked to the developers and it's, you're right. It, there should be audio going through. We're going to get that fixed. We can't tell you when exactly the patch is going to come out for that, but it's, it'll be soon. We're going to fix that. Awesome. And that's the difference, folks, between dealing with Streamlabs and dealing with Rockfin. I don't know. I've never dealt with, with Rockfin. Count yourself lucky. Yeah. Count yourself blessed. So we're going to throw them the two amendment trap stomp, and we're going to try this again. So, and we know that Telegram is fucky with the Streamlabs. So do I send it on Dick Sword? Oh, no, it's not fixed yet. I still can't play it. I mean, I can play it so that the audience can hear it, but you still won't hear it because it hasn't oh, been fixed fine. yet. That's fine. I'll they just, just know that there's a problem and it's going to get fixed. I know the workaround, Drizzle. So, like, to play the file, though, is it better to play it out of Discord tab or out of uh, Telegram? Uh. Not Telegram, because again, Telegram has its own media player, right? Which opens in its own environment that you can't actually like do anything with. It's so right. fucking retarded. Of course. All right. So two amendment. I mean, it is actually a decent media player. There it is. And here it is, folks. And the oldest song is now the newest song. Two Amendment Trap Stomp Clown Shit Remix. <laughs> oh, there there it, is. it is. Clown Shit Remix. All right, so let me go to mute so that you don't hear the speakers on my desktop when I turn the audio on. Oh, are you going to monitor it? Offsite. Uh, well, I just don't want to hear it when you're playing. I don't know if you're playing it yet. Oh, okay. I guess we're going to play it now then. All right, here you go, folks. And uh, just picture young Donald Trump dancing on Soul Train with a mullet and everything. All this is playing. Oh wow. We're going to protect Christianity, and I can say that I don't have to be politically correct. Or we're going to protect it. You know. And I, I asked Jerry and I asked some of the folks because I hear this is a major theme right here, but 2 Corinthians, right? 2 Corinthians 3.17, that's the whole ball game. Where the Spirit of the Lord, right? Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And here there is Liberty College. But I have liberty. only five words for you. From my cold, dead hands. <laughs> I don't have 
to be politically correct, but we're going to protect it. You know? But two Corinthians, right? Two Corinthians. From my cold, dead hands, I have to make my word for you. From my cold, dead hands.
Damn, that was good. That's a long one, but that was good. That was really good. That's what she said. Yeah. Um, so that was basically I saved the original mix of the vocal track for that song, and then I kept part of the hook from the bass line, and then made a whole new beat, a whole new everything, just totally, completely from scratch. And so, like, if you go on to my Rumble channel at um, Peasants Podcast um, Rumble channel, I'm pretty sure the very, very, very first video I upload uploaded was the original uh, Two Amendment Trap Stomp. Um, and uh, and so you can listen to the two songs back to back. Well, I, I haven't put up a video for the new one yet because I, again, I made seven new songs in seven hours, put an album together with eleven tracks, and did all that yesterday evening into the early night hours, early morning hours, and uh, and then I worked all day, and then got home, and then spent about seven hours with the kids. That's why I'm kind of deaf and both ears. Um, oh, that makes sense. Yeah. So, you know, as it got to the end of the uh, remix, it reminded me that, you know, 2016 was like um, eight fucking years ago. And, you know, if there's anything we need more of in, 2024 after all this time has gone by it we definitely need more offensive content more <laughs> racism more sexism more misogyny more um oh what am i looking for there um andrew tate um toxic masculinity come on help me out here inner monologue where's my uh tim cast toboggan Anyways, uh, so uh, against my better judgment, yeah, um, because you know it's been a real issue with me the the Malcolm X song because you know he keeps talking about House Negro, House Negro, House Negro, and I was like, when I first heard that speech, I was like, oh my fucking god. How is this not a fucking killer ass house track? You have Malcolm X saying over and over again, this is what a house Negro does. Mm -hmm. He lives in the house. And the house is, is, and he's going on and on about the house. Bro, that's like every other fucking house track song. Yeah. I've got fucking Malcolm X to, and instead it's Malcolm X explaining what it's like living in the United States today, right? What's the difference between Yona's wife and crystal balls on breaking points? Well, one's a field Negro, the other one's a house Negro. One rich splains things away, and the other one's like, nah, fuck that shit. No. Y- y'all guess which is which. Because <laughs> it only works one way. So, to to uh, kick off the 11 o'clock hour, we gave you a taste of some... Oh, holy shit. ...mild sauce. Some Taco Bell mild sauce in terms of racism and, you know, overall supremacy and tomfoolery. But against my better judgment, I, I have sent to the drizzle the link for... House Negro, Mark Farina remix, and we will save that for the very end. Because if if you really, really are just desperately dying for a racism fix, folks, we're not going to disappoint. Um, now you got to work for. I've it, actually, though. I have never released this song. I mean, we're putting it our asses a, on the line here, so you got to help us out. Yona song. So secret, in fact, I've never ever released it. I've never 
Oh, put it shit. up on it's yeah. double secret. Uh, and the only time I uploaded it, I did upload it to Bandcamp when I put out. I think it was either the Butler's Medley, which would be album ten, or it may have been on the second album, the one I did with Glory Jones. Uh. Antigua Barbuda. What was the name of that album? Radioactive, I think. Hmm. I, I don't remember. Um, I've, I've got it up on the Bandcamp. But anyways, when you upload albums on Bandcamp, it has a special feature where you can stick bonus tracks that will play if they buy the whole album. They'll get the whole album, and then ta-da! There's a bonus track. And when they go to purchase the album, albums that have bonus tracks, it says, hey, if you buy this album, you get a bonus track. And so I thought, well, hey, that that's fucking cool, man. I can remember buying records and then CDs later on, and cassette tapes, and like, like with uh, Beck and other artists, where like the album would play to the end mm -hmm. and then there would be like a minute or two of silence and then all of a sudden two or three more songs would come on you're like whoa what the fuck is this yeah, it's, it's a long known it's feature tracks, man so i thought well hell this would be a way for me to share x49 limit house negro and so I stuck it on there as a bonus track. You know what? Instead of that, guessing. That would be a good use for it. Yeah. Instead of guessing, why don't I actually. Well, oh, you know, I don't need three tabs for Discord. Probably not. Oh, I, I don't know. I don't know how you use Discord. Everybody uses it in a different manner. That's kind of the beauty of it. It it's, can be multiple things to multiple people. Don't try that at home, by the way. It doesn't work. I put my high Yona music on Bane Camp somewhere here. I just got to find the website. Oh, high Yona dot Bane Camp. <laughs> doesn't get any easier than that, folks. <laughs> uh, let's see. And there it is. High Yona Bane Camp. Uh, let's go to the bottom. I like it when you start digging through the internet. Radioactive Ting and Ting. Is this the one with the bonus track? I don't know. You yeah, have to and buy that, it to find out. And that bonus track is Blood Keeper. So it is on Butler's Medley, album 10. It's the bonus track. Yes! Yeah, and there it says. Butler's Medley, album 10. Includes unlimited streaming via the free Bandcamp app plus high-quality download and MP3, black, and many more. Includes a special bonus track with Malcolm X. And there it is, folks. Kids today are like, who is that? Why Up doesn't he have now, a last name? The only way that you could hear this song was to buy my album, bitch. Cough up three dollars and forty five USD, whatever that stands for. Um, ultra smelly dick. I'm gonna say. Um, I don't know. Ask uh, Bernanke or Yellen; they'll tell you. Um, hey, how's that? Whatever you uh, do, don't ask Japan. Don't just that don't. Boring, right? Don't. It's like, but Yona, there was growth. There was growth. Yeah, yeah, growth compared to GDP. Excuse me. Anyways, what what are we spending a dollar to get sixty cents of growth now? Anyway. Uh, somewhere around there. I oh, think. don't you yeah. don't you make me go all Jim Rickards and Peter Schiff right now? I'm totally not doing a financial rant right now. We do not give financial advice on this channel. Page two, Paul Harvey. No. So, anyway. No, but we do tell you about the uh, the developments <laughs> in the advancing <laughs> digital enslavement system. Yeah, I mean, you know. CBD so, and THC do not combine to form CBDC. Don't get it twisted. 
that's an NFT. So, Yona, did you happen to catch the the pre-show segment <laughs> where they they were doing the trial run of the new CBDC system? Yeah, with all yeah, the big yeah. banks, right? Did yeah, you... yeah, uh, that's the universal ledger with the Bank of International right. Settlement. Right, everything on one. Yeah, they're calling it the streamlining process. We're just we're just streamlining and automating this. You see. Was to make it more efficient, right? right to make it more right, efficient and convenient because those two things always correlate with one another, right? Right, right. Um, so did, did you happen to notice who wasn't invited to play uh, of all the big boy banks in the United States? Because you had, you had J.P. Morgan was right. there, right? You had uh, Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo and was City. invited into the playpen. Chitty Bank was there, right? Yep. City was there. That's right. And Boa, Bank of America. The the the, the Boa constrictor was there. Bancorp. Bancorp. You're yeah, you're yeah, thinking Bancorp. of Bancorp. That was yeah, that was yeah. the other one. Uh Bank of America was out. not invited uh... to this particular party. No. No. <laughs> T D Bank of North America, they were there. They were there. Bank of America was not invited. Oh, man. Yeah. And here, I was thinking that, that Wells Fargo was going to end up being the odd man out. But no, it turns out it's Bank of America. Well, I mean, Wells Fargo has been practicing highway robbery on the trails out west for about... But they've been getting after it, man. 150 years, um, and they still steal from um, depositors and investors. Uh, this endorsement was not paid for by Wells Fargo, just so you know. <laughs> Nor will it ever be. But yeah. Oh, man. So they're, they're starting to get all the kinks worked out now. Uh, Bank of America will fail six months down the road, uh, and they'll, uh, that's where the emergency will come from. We'll have a Sorry, we'll have I, a financial emergency, right? I would normally be more invigorated and jovial, but the last thing that I watched before logging on to the stream lab, because uh, I'd heard so much about it, and everyone was talking about worms or eating wobbly Bobby's brain, you know, RFP. I know uh, that's been funny. That that has and, actually been entertaining in the news cycle. And every time uh, I hear worms that, worms eating my brain. You know, and I, I think of um, Pink Floyd, The Wall, you know, the movie with the animation. I need to hear Rant cra Rantcast and, doing, uh, doing Bobby talking about worms yeah. eating his brain. And the worms ate good. into his brain. Ooh. I'm sorry, I distracted you. That's what I need to remix. Some Pink Floyd, yeah. Remix some more Pink Floyd. I have remixed Pink Floyd twice. Once I remixed Pink Floyd with the Wu Tang Clan. That's right. I remember, remember that. I remember that. You that may was remember really good. the Yona remix mm -hmm. of um, that was the track from uh, Dark Side of the Moon, the Prism album. Yeah. Um. Great gig in the sky, maybe. Might have been. Was what I uh I don't remember. Sampled. There was like five different I just different remember it phrases. was really good. There was five different phrases that I ripped out of there with the guitars and everything and then looped them up and then and then put it on top of the Wu Tang beat. And then uh the I went back and ripped um the track called High Hopes. From the Division Bell album, more recently, from Pink Floyd, you know, um, like the hook is like the grass was green up, do 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 do. The nights were longer, you know. It, it, there's no Roger Waters. It's it's just douchebag liberal. But right. anyways, um, and I remixed that. 
with a song called, um, what did I call that? Testa del Duce, or Mussolini's Head, which is a song originally by a guy named uh, Greg Greenway. I want to say his name was. Anyways, it was uh, recommended to me by my good friend over there uh, with harps and them. Um, oh, with the V. His last name with a V. Man, I'm too high to remember his name. I'm sorry, dude. Was it, they have v, strange names. Like harps. V. Van. Vanarchy. Vanarchy. Well, Vans. V, Vans. Yeah. I, I didn't forget your name, did I? I didn't. You know, I went. I, I thought Over of V. Over on Saturday and then I Night immediately, Anarchy. Yeah, I see, Tom I thought Cooper. of E, and I, instead of going straight to Vance and Fanarchy, I went straight to the fucking aliens that are lizard people on the big white spaceships on NBC in my 1980s evening TV stream there. Um, was that NBC? I thought it was ABC. Maybe it, was it doesn't matter. It, it honestly um, doesn't fucking matter. V. It's programming. For visitors. Right. The aliens are amongst us, and they eat mice. And they have green reptiles. You realize you okay. realize that that was for us, right? Yeah. Our generation, because like the yeah. adults weren't really into it at all. No. They thought no. it was fucking stupid. It was it was it also for had... us who were really too young to be watching that type of content at that time. Yeah, and it came out at the same time that you got Crockin and Tubbs hanging with fucking flamingos and kilos in Miami Vice with the Jan Hammer 80s fucking synth music, you know. Yeah. And then you go to fucking V and and the aliens are wearing the fucking Miami Vice fucking sunglasses, you know. Look like they're about to climb K2 or Mount Everest or something in the Himalaya range. And, you know, <laughs> and it's got the fucking killer synth vibe. And I remember there was one episode of V where they're roller skating and they're, they're playing um, a couple songs from Greece. You know, it's got the John Travolta and the Olivia Newton John. Um, ooh, ooh, ooh. What, how's that? You're the one that I love. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, call on me. And, and you know, and then you, you look in the bathroom and there's two you know, lizard green fucking reptile skins like making out and they've got the fucking roller skates on and cue more 80s synthesizer music like Take On Me by AHA. And, you know, I, I really connected to that culturally and turns out there really are lizard people in this satanic death cult. That That's actually a thing. Yeah. It's actually a thing. It's pretty cool, actually. Until they're until you're the one being sacrificed on their altar, then well, you know, well yeah, then it gets weird, then it gets awkward. I would think so. Come on, guys, if you're gonna kill me, can I at least blow the goat horn one last time? <laughs> okay, all right, go ahead, hail Satan. All right, do what you got. <laughs> I just wanted to blow that horn again. It's really fucking cool. It's like like all twisted and spirally, like a fucking wizard stick, but makes this fucking killer sound. I need more fucking goat horn. Just like Christopher Walken needs more fucking cowbell. You need more goat horn? I need more goat horn. Your goats aren't horny enough? Dead fella just sent... You know, speaking of which, I I found out an aphrodisiac for the female. Uh Uh-oh. Oh, Oh, shit. We might need to put this behind the paywall. it, It was called the horny goat weed. Oh, I saw that. I saw that, yeah. Horny goat weed. Where is that available? Is that like Gross. in your in your uh your Walmart pharmacy you can go get some of that? Uh well actually, um for you Alex Jones fans out there, Infowarstore.com. Uh, you know, I think it's an in fact, you can probably get that lumped in with the special for the colloidal um, silver and the other colloidal minerals. Um, Infowarstore.com. It's called Horny Goat Weeds. Three so goats. how does it work? Do you smoke it? 
Well, I mean, because I like know, to can, smoke the weeds. You can get you know? tincture. You can, um, but now it's it's a female aphrodisiac. So yeah, you like smoke it, blow it in her face. What do you do? She smokes it. How is there's, that fun for there's, me? There's male aphrodisiacs too, you know. Oh. But, um, you know, I mean, it's it's medicine. It's it's weeds. I mean, it, like medical marijuana. That's actually a thing. What in like forty three states now or something? Yeah, not in Texas though. <laughs> but not in Texas. No. For the Figures, whole... I pick the one fucking state that can't get its act together around marijuana legalization. The Unidozer says, Yona, maybe you can do a song dedicated to hate speech for the whole of Babylon 2024. I'm sorry, whore of Babylon. Right. Who's that? Taylor, Taylor Swift? I was going to go with Victoria Newland. No, no, she's not the whore right now. Because they actually have to be, like, attractive to somebody. Oh, I was going to say Kamala Harris, but when you just said attractive, it was a prerequisite. Right, right, that right. Just no, her out. no, 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 Sorry. that's not her. That's not her. God damn. No, it's see? usually they'll, they'll crown them each year at the Super Bowl halftime show. And that'll be the horror of Babylon for that year. It's like a, it's almost like a, um, what do they call it? Uh, it's like a gender reveal type of the, type of deal. Yeah, thing. like 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 that time there was <laughs> that the was loud. quote unquote. Um, we got storms rolling through the area, folks. Uh, no telling what might happen on the broadcast. I think they called it a wardrobe malfunction. Well, that was Jeff one that started. Ember Lake. Yeah. That was when they started it. Showed the pierced nipple of uh, Wacko Jacko's baby sister Janet, right, doing the Super Bowl show. Um, and I was watching live on the CBS when there was. Um, is that what allowed her to marry the um, the? What is she married like a, a billionaire Saudi oil? Uh, yeah, or other. Yeah. yeah. And now it's known as the Rhythm Wahhabi Nation. That's right. There you go. All right, and I can see. tell you, I can definitely tell Janet Jackson right now, Janet, what the fuck have you done for me lately? Not a goddamn thing. Anyways. Anyway. Uh, she'd probably make you call her uh, Miss Jackson. I'm sorry, Miss Jackson. Yeah. I am for real. Shout out. Um, I don't Andre know, man. Nelson. I think I think people are starting to to figure some shit out. I heard earlier this week because you know there's those uh, the protest. The protests are really popular at college campuses nowadays. You and I don't know if you were aware of that or not. All the kids oh, are into yeah. it. It's all, all the rage. Pro- the pro Hamas anti Israel yeah. protest. Yeah, all yeah. the kids want to do this shit, apparently. Uh, I don't know. It's again, it trends. People like trends, right? Well, the ones that are protesting at George Washington University, right? Uh-oh. Or, or GWU, if you're, if you're nasty, they are oh, actually man. they're calling for campus leaders' heads to roll, like literally. With sharp blades that that drop and sever uh, the 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 head from the body, and so it goes rolling down the street. What do they call that? Public executions. <laughs> That's right. Nice. Yeah. You know, actually, GWU is kind of like when the Yona's about to bust the nut. I I I cough out a big old fucking dope hit all over the tramp stamp, and I look down. It's Foggy Bottom. Go GWU. Anyway, back to you, Driz. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I've been waiting for four years now uh, for someone to, to start calling for public executions of, of, you know, 
people that are supposedly wielding power and calling the shots. And lo and behold, it has finally happened. But I didn't expect it to be these retards doing it. Yeah, you know, really, take it from a half-engine mongrel like the Yona here, okay? Execution, the faster and quicker it is, the less of a punishment and the more merciful it is. You see, if you go back to the New England days and, you know, the old Dominion, Virginia colony, go back to Jamestown and, like, you know, Colonial Williamsburg and all that shit, you know, they're, they're still doing, they, they keep it colonial in Williamsburg. Um, check it out. Anyway, it's, uh, and there's a beautiful little parkway that goes from Colonial Williamsburg straight to fucking Jamestown. Knock two out in one day, man. Boom. And you're already back in Richmond at your shitty fucking hotel. Don't That's get right. a hotel. Getting shot at. Don't do it. Just don't. Get the get the nicer hotel down by Bush Garden. Come on, man. It's right off 64. It's fucking easy, man. What are you doing? Don't get the hotel in Richmond. Anyway, so people I'm don't listen, man. People don't, don't, don't listen. listen. Yeah, and, and Richmond's gonna, a shithole, man. Always has been. Then you're going to wake up and you're like, oh my God, this is the worst continental breakfast I've ever seen. And But, you know, I mean, we're right here off 95. It's right here in Richmond. And then all it's going to dawn on you. Fuck. Yona told me. Yeah. Don't get the La Quinta off 95. No, they don't Richmond. even have the waffle maker. Come on. What are you doing? People aren't serious. We we are not a serious nation anymore. And so you know? now your ass is having to get off the fucking interstate again to go to a Thornton's to buy another cheese Danish because of the non-ass continental breakfast because your ass had to get the hotel room in Richmond when you're going to Bush Gardens in Colonial Williamsburg, man. That's not even in fucking Richmond, dude. Fucking tourists. Virginia is not for tourists. Virginia is for lovers. Anyway, says it on the sign. Yeah, I still haven't found evidence of that, though. Well. Or any evidence of the, the Sikh Semper Tyrannis. Haven't found any evidence of that. That's the difference between Richmond and Petersburg. That's the difference. There's there's some freedom and there is yeah, some there's some freedom to be had in Petersburg. Audrey yeah. down in the Pebergs. Um, trust me. Oh yeah, uh, that's where my dad grew up. Shout out Fort Lee or whatever it's called now. I'm sure it's not Fort Robert E. Lee anymore. Just like Fort Bragg is now Fort Liberty and yeah. Fort Hood is Fort Carrizo. And, oh my God, it's Fort I Unicorn don't... Rainbow. One day, for shits and giggles, I decided to take a pen and pencil and go look on the internet and see. Oh no! How many fucking army bases have been renamed? Oh no! Oh my god! It was like twelve or thirteen, and it, it literally looked like as they were renaming the bases, they got all the way down to Fort Benning and Fort Bragg. And ran out of like um one legged, three eyed, fucking half black, half Sikh, Muslim, Jewish fucking military service members to virtue signal to. And that's how Fort Bragg became Fuck, what are we gonna call it? <sighs> Fort Liberty. All right, we're rocking with it. And call the other one Fort Freedom. Okay, we're done with the renaming. Next. And I'm like, whoa. What the fuck, guys? Yeah. All of a sudden, I mean, it's kind of like during hurricane season. Where they have these really cool names for the hurricanes. Until they get to the Z. Until they get to the end of the list. And then they just go to fucking Greek. Hurricane 2014 Omega. Oh, God damn it. And, oh, and I guess Sigma's really going to fuck up Barbuda again, right? Come on. How are you guys just going to go from names to fucking Greek letters? I mean. Because they're just making the shit up as they go along anyway. 
It doesn't actually matter. None of this really matters. It's we've, now, we've all been here, done all of this shit all before. We're just in a time loop. on social media, on Facebook, on Twitter, on Gab, on chats, everywhere, I'm seeing the same fucking shit being said. Frat boys on campus are going to save this country. Oh, yeah. Okay. Frat boys going down and dealing with these pro Hamas. What are they going to do? Win cornhole tournaments? To to save the country, like what the fuck are seriously? I mean, I, I look. For it's those it's interesting. Things. I wasn't being fed that. I was being fed the whole uh, Kendrick and Drake uh, bullshit. That's what I was being fed by social media. So apparently, well, that- I kind of I I slipped my way into like I guess the like I got a heavy black filter on me or something. I don't know. I, I can help you. We're, I'm going to take you about 32 years back to a guy named Booger and the other cool nerds in the Lambda, Lambda, Lambda fraternity. I remember those they guys, were, yeah. The Tri-Lambs. Right. <laughs> nerds! Yeah. Um, and, uh, and, of course, the Nemesis fraternity um, would be the Alpha Betas led by uh, Booger. I hate nerds. Um, yeah, he and was the one that would, they would scream nerds. Yeah. Nerds! Yeah. Uh, and, uh, of course... Because uh, he did too many steroids. Ogre is totally right or die Zionist in this um, analogy. We're going to call this another yo-analogy. Um, and uh, Booger and the other cool um, bodily fluid-eating nerds are um, definitely pro-Hamas. I mean... If you remember the character Booger, Gesundheit. you can definitely imagine Booger going <laughs> and then <laughs> and eating. Good it. lord, are you all right? Uh, well, you know we haven't had an election for Hamas in twenty years, so it's tastes a little funny. Um, I don't know how you blame sixteen-year-olds for Hamas being in power in Gaza. But there's not been an election in twenty years, and everyone knows when there was an election. That was magic super democracy time, just like it is here in America. Hmm? Uh, God damn. Oh, my God. Just people trying to live their fucking lives while uh, satanic death cult is trying to sell more bombs and kill more people. Kill more people, yeah. That's the main goal. Got to up the body count. It's always It's got to be bigger. It's got to be more. I just wish at some I, point they're yeah. gonna run out of people. Tonto has a mission. And and this is gonna be my mission throughout my, my summer festival season here. As as we Oh shit, around. that's right. That's about to and, kick and off. Beat the ground here. I I think we have tentative, tentatively made an informal agreement that we're gonna be like uh, you know, the Hall of Justice with the Super Friends, you know, Aquaman. Superman, well, Yona and Driz are going to be like the Wonder Twins. Um, and uh, Driz, being on the western westerly sides of the Mississippis, is going to handle the, the western uh, yeah, confab uh, there at the um, Third Eye uh, carna- Carnivalation. Yeah, and then uh, do my damnedest to get out there. And my plan is to go meet with uh, Archistowska at the Gosto de Archistowska or the um, the Sweat Lodge of Starts Fires. Or a uh, better translation would be Rich's house um, yeah. to help load up the shit and do the, the whole... great and powerful uh, Richard Grove. You know, do the whole stage set up uh, at the uh, Porcupiney Festival. Uh, and get the uh, stage set up because uh, for those that were vacillating, teeter tottering on the fence about, I don't know if I'm going to go to Pork Fest this year. You should go. It's going to be uh, Michael Badnerick, Richard Grove, um, Carol Quigley, James Baldwin, Muhammad Ali, Malcolm X. Jim Baker, and of course, Kenneth oh damn, Cole. you're bringing all like everybody. 
people. Like the whole damn whole roll call. On my song banks. And, you know, where there is this autonomy tent where there have been DJs in the past, shout out Josh Hale, um, mixing and sending out tracks. Imagine, if you will, the DJ Hyona sending out the fucking tracks to the festival goers. And they're, you know, they're just like trying to enjoy buzz and drugs and everything and freedom and liberty and all this stuff. And whoa, is that Carol fucking Quigley? Yes. Yes, it is. But is that Richard Grove rapping with Tupac fucking Shakur Machiavelli? Yes. Why, yes. Yes, it is. That's the joy. That is correct. Of being a DJ and making the shit you dance at. So there you go. Yeah, like I say, I think it would it would be more appropriate just looking at it from an animal mascot standpoint for me to go to pork fest and you to go to the third eye carnival. Cause I can identify more with the porcupine than the right. marmot. And I but, can identify more with the marmot because my wife was born on February the 2nd groundhog day uh, and her name in Cherokee is literally Ogana, which means marmot. So, uh, but I guess we're kind of doing a wife swap this summer, Chris. Sorry. Yeah, okay, sure, whatever. It's for syndicated TV, it's all good. It's for a good cause, all right? And I don't want to hear anybody say anything different. To be fair, I did try to coordinate a Yona appearance at this year's Third Eye Carnival. We tried, we failed. The takeaway is, try again harder. That's right, you should always try harder. Which means wait another year. Anyways, there's other festivals. I don't think it's going to be another year. I think it'll be sooner than that. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, well, to be fair, I was not really sure how that would work with the whole like 27 hour drive one way. Because at that mm-hmm. point, I can't really. I don't know if I could do a 27 hour drive nonstop by myself. That's that's pretty. Wait a second. Never mind. I forgot about crystal meth. So uh, oh, yeah. you know, that's easy. You know, fun fact. Um, I've done those, that before. For those that are familiar with some of these foreign terms that are borrowed into the English language, like uh, a je ne sais quoi, savoir faire, laissez faire, blitzkrieg. Hmm. Yes. I was about to say, pardon your French. Blitzkrieg is, uh, of course, uh, Lightning the war. Langsprache. Lightning strike. Blitzkrieg. Lightning strike. Uh, and, uh, well, you see, the Germans built these tanks called um, Panzer. Die Panzer. Uh, Panther. Panzer. And the Panzer Battalion you know, with the tank drivers inside these panzers. Um, they were able to drive across, excuse me, the Netherlands and Belgium and France. Netherlands checked in this week. Day, night, day, night, just two, three, four days in a Not row. Not France, just though. France doesn't like us. Tweaking Can't imagine all why. across uh, Northern Europe. Uh, and it turns out Blitzkrieg, was German tank driver plus crystal methamphetamine. And now you know the rest of the story. That's right. Thank you, Paul Harvey. Uh, also, the development of... Um, that makes sense, H- though. HDMD, the, uh, the liquid compound behind ecstasy. Uh, the first attempt to make different... Uh, LSD of- was created in that part <laughs> of the world as well. Cocaine making the cocaine paste from the coca leaf that was pioneered by the Germans. Um, Very industrious people, the Germans. The Third Reich was very concerned with allopathic medicine. Um, Henry Ford and the good folks at IBM, Prescott Bush, man, there were so many industrialists that were totally double Dutch ruddering with the uh, Nazis. I mean, it was mm-hmm. one big, everyone grabbed the guy's cock next to you and just keep stroking. It was, um, 
and 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 if they stand just right, looking overhead from a drone shot, looks like mm-hmm. a swastika. Um, but a red, white, and blue swastika. Uh, who can forget the Berlin Olympics of '36? Anyways, uh, God damn man. Dude, they were they were praising we got Germany. Videos of this, like, yes, they were praising them footage. in the United States there's Congress like, all the way up until like 1939. They were like, "Man, look at those Germans go! They're, they're such a proud people." The Nazi salute that all the kids did during the uh, Pledge of Allegiance—they got rid of that. After the Nazis started doing the whole thing, yeah, we 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 did that. Oh, is that when they switched to the the just hand hold? Over yes, the heart thing? just keep your hand over your heart. No more um, Nazi salute. <laughs> Damn it, Nazis! You ruined it for everybody. That's kind of like you know the blue. <laughs> That's um, what they do. The blue Zionist star mm-hmm. kind of been ruined as a symbol. I mean. Bibi Netanyahu is to the Zionist blue star what Dylan Mulvaney is to Bud Light at this point. That's an appropriate analogy. That is. I was pretty damn good, as a matter of fact. <laughs> Clip that. <laughs> well, man, I, I got to say, I still won't noticed, make man. it on TikTok, though. Yeah. Dude. Although we did TikTok. better this week. They didn't slap our wrist this week. They just limited our reach. TikTok deleted my profile video. What? Right where I said "pooping butt, Virginia." Grizzle and Yona. Seriously. Pooping butt. Fucking pooping butt was. And so I'm like, oh my god. So I'm looking at my. So we can't face. have that on TikTok, but a woman can stick her ass in my face and shake it all around for sixty seconds. That's okay. Yeah, so I'm on the TikTok thing with the messages, and I see that that's going to be deleted. Okay. So then I click to see the new followers that are about the thing. I think I'm going to I'm gonna hack my TikTok so I see nothing but Chinese TikTok. One of the avatars for the new followers is literally a fleshy, meaty, fucking cocky, Balls, dick, lawns, and all. What? And I'm like, wait a second. So my avatar... Wait, you got a porn star following you? My avatar with me wearing the fucking black hat in the state of Virginia in a fucking wooden gazebo looking at some graffiti that says pooping butt. (laughs) That's right. That has to go. That has to go, but the dick pic that's fine. That's not offensive to anyone, Yona. And then, uh, just a word, uh, just a complaint. With what? No, no, it's not a word. It's not a complaint. Um, I don't know what to call this. Um, what the fuck? We'll just call this what the fuck. So, I think. 10 of the last 12 followers, new followers to my channel, have all posted comments. Oh, nice. I get all excited. And I'm like, all right, I'm getting some engagement. That fucking last. This is awesome. And then I go over to the thing and I log in and I scroll down below the video to read the comment. And, oh, man. Not again. Do you have your dick pills? No. We got specials on dick pills. No, it's it's worse than that. So let me... Oh, is it like the ones on Rumble where they're like, oh my God, I love your content, but you're not getting any reach. I can help you. Email me at this address. Yeah. Is that yeah. is that what it was? I, I just sent you a copy of the uh, pretty much boilerplate facsimile comment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your content I, is top uh, notch, and I admire your channel. Oh no, it does not say and I admire. Oh, I know. Oh I know, no, I know, no, I know. no. 
Don't gloss over the glaring grammatical errors from Mumbai, India there. Um, your content is top-notch and admiring of your channelings. One you're thing I am noticing is you are not you getting the engagement you are deserving. I am loving to helping you with all of that. Also helping with growing your channel visibility, unlocking earning space to earn passive income. Just come to Pajit.com. Let's turn Rumble channel into a sensation. Imagine searching views, vibrant communities. Oh, and he even rocking. included his Fiverr link. That's I know. awesome. That's awesome. That's that's top notch, Yona. That's first class. You can trust I that. I know. Thank you, Timothy Dawn. One one one. What the fuck, man? <sighs> and that was a segment on get back. Those are those are like honestly all... like the only comments that we get on Rumble. What are those? Fuck? Yeah. Like what I don't know if fuck, people man? I don't I know people watch. I don't know if people comment. I don't know if they thumbs up. I don't get to see any of that shit. And that's by design. That is absolutely 100% by design. Ladies and gentlemen, if you think you are seeing accurate numbers from any of the social media platforms about your content, you are fucking delusional. Because they are gaming each and every single one of us. They only show you what they want you to see. Doesn't matter what the real numbers are. You know what my favorite thing is? And this is the only reason why I simulcast on Twixter at the uh, Elon Musk um, Islamic um, prayer site. That I do it because to. apparently they haven't figured out that it's a thing and I don't have to give them money every month to do it. So yeah. here's a big finger up your butthole until you figure out how to remove it. And so when I'm Hope on the stream, any comments that people are on the people logged into Twitter that are watching the stream through Twitter, when they comment, their comments pop up over on my little side thing from the stream yard. Oh, really? Um, and there's like a little red box in the upper right hand corner that shows me how much views and engagement I'm getting on Twitter. And normally, whether it's YouTube or Facebook or Rumble or Odyssey, on and on and on, um, as the stream progresses, the number of people who have tuned into the stream goes up. The numbers go up as the show goes along. Sometimes they go down. Normally. But if you're Peasant's Podcast, Oh my God, make it make sense. Like, Dude, I've seen okay. views disappear. Like, like 10 minutes into this fucking show, I'm already up to 38 views on Twitter. Yeah. 10 minutes later. All right, 20 minutes into this show, and I've had three viewers. What, what, right. What? But what, there was, what was it? Uh, OBDM. OBDM was uh, live streaming their last episode, and I looked at it. I think it was last night. Uh, right before we went on the air. And I was looking at it, I was like, wait a minute. So the, the, the post that contains the live stream that was on Twitter, like the actual post where you could watch it and listen, all of that great shit, that had like 176 impressions, but there were zero views on the video. I was like, how do you, how do, you do that? How does that work? How's that happen? And like, I even went and clicked on the video to go actual into the media player there on Twitter, their, their walled garden environment to see if that. the view count would go up and it didn't. No. Nope. Just stayed at zero. <laughs> I was like, all right, sure. Whatever. So you mean to tell me when you get all the way down to the third lower level room inside the cave, which has the best fucking shadow puppet show you've ever seen. That shit's not real. Chad, no, that's, that's called real. Tim cast. <laughs> never miss an opportunity to do that. Never, never, never. You know, 
the mental image that comes to my head when I think of inner monologue is that little white box on the desk, uh, you know, at when the Charlie's Angels all meet in the office and Charlie is just the voice in the little white box. Yep. Okay, angels. Um, and that, that's the inner monologue. Well, look at it like this, Shona. All right. Once the American economy fails, right, and uh, everything becomes worthless, because that's that's planned, right? That's good lord. The hell's going on around here? Oh, thunderstorms. That's right. Um, because that's that's what the media has been screaming about for years now. Oh, there's a big collapse coming. Big collapse. Well, we don't have to worry about the big collapse anymore because just like they're doing in Argentina. Uh, you know, we can partner with Sam Altman's world coin and people can get $50 of cryptocurrency for, uh, their, their iris scans of their eyeballs. It's a win-win. You know, I really wouldn't worry about a recession or a depression. The United States can do the same thing Japan's doing. Issue your debt in yen, print more yen. And enjoy a 34-year-long fucking recession. Am I right? I mean, <laughs> and here we are. Uh, why not? I work for them. Oh, and, but their their currency just collapsed. Well, the same thing's going to happen to the dollar. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, because it, it underpins the slow the, yeah. march into, you yeah. know, if, if you really liked inflation, wait till hyperinflation kicks in. <laughs> I don't. I don't think we're actually going to get to Weimar levels. I don't think we are. I remember the first time they're, I met. They're the segmenting from- the world. If you'll notice this, they're actually segmenting the financial structure of the world into three zones: the American zone, the Asian zone, and then everybody else. Yeah, the breaking. So what you need to do is bring all of those zones into parity with one another somehow. However, you have to do that. If you have to collapse shit, then you have to collapse shit. But that hurts them almost as much as it hurts us if they have to go that route. So it's kind of better to just let things slowly decay until you get them to the level that you want, and then you can hit the gas a little bit. Well, you know, and roll you out your, uh, you know, your new digital currency on your universal ledger. It's all a matter of conditioning as you devalue and devalue. Um, which brings me uh, to an important reminder. We've got about, I think, about 90 seconds before we got to jump on the Malcolm X train and, and ride the show home. Um, value for value system. Uh, for those that are donationally inclined, as I like to say, um, do check out the manufacturingreality.org page where it has donate links. Uh, provide value. It says provide uh, value. Uh, yeah. Provide value. There um, you go. Value for value system. I, I fuck that up every time. Uh, we, you get used to it. It takes practice. Uh, uh, yeah. But at least, you know, at least I remember to mention it. Hey, that, that, that's, that's right. Which part. is more than I do. And I, I'm the one that built this shit. <laughs> so my way of showing appreciation but as we uh, like to always say uh stock safety wakes the league take care and blessings to all uh and still got it's a song is five minutes and 45 seconds long so yeah that means at 11 i think we're good 15 seconds so i got about 10 seconds left um don't forget to tune in tomorrow night for the call-in show and you can be a part of this madness too folks and the saturday night freak out and the Sunday main event show. And then we've got a town hall coming up this Tuesday. Special thanks to Studio 8424. Oh, yeah. We got and Jay Dyer coming into town Mr. hall this week. Yeah, that should be fun. 24-7 uh, for simulcasting and rebroadcasting uh, the Grand Theft World uh, Liberty Radio-related content and some peasantry podcastery there. Uh, and that's all I got. Uh, I think uh, this one's in the bag. Uh, who's ready to go to the plantation? Oh, I am. I'll hit the button. All right. Here we go. Love you guys.
wear a better house than this? Where can I wear better clothes than this? Where can I eat better food than this? That was that house Negro. 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 In those days he was called a house nigga. And that's what we call him today because we still got some house niggas running around here. 